Hello, my name is uh, Abel Verweg. I'm a product marketing manager uh, at Mendix. And as you can see, I'm uh, working from home, just as all of us are. We at Mendix also know that it can be challenging, especially when you want to start up a project and you cannot be with the whole team in one war room. You do not have a whiteboard to brainstorm and to work on together. Uh, and therefore, uh, I, I'm here on the call today with uh, Willem. Uh, we've been uh, team members in the expert services team. And we've done uh, several projects at the uh, customers also together. And today we want to focus on the Sprint Zero. So really how to initiate the project. And we want to share some tips and tricks on how to do it in a 100% in a remote situation. Willem, uh, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hello everybody. I'm Willem Gorsen, I'm the design lead now at Mendix for the App Services team, which means that, uh, well, I still deal with customers, but definitely also Siemens and our own organization as a, as a big customer for my team. Um, what I want to share with everyone today is, is, our, uh, is our preparation templates that we used before all this happened and everyone was still at work and to actually share the knowledge with everyone that they still work also uh, when everyone's at home. So let me just grab some of these templates. So in general, there are two main templates here, which are also two phases. If you're gonna go through a preparation sprint with your team, um, the first bit is about the larger vision. This is hence also to make a vision template in which you briefly state what you wanna do. You go into for who's it for and, and what the objectives are, and you define a solution. Um, this with template- who, With whom do you fill this in? Well, this is the, the larger stakeholder group. So I always want to have the product owner in there, uh, a minimum of one from the development team. I also want key stakeholders and preferably some key users in those sessions to get uh, a lot of different perspectives in on this session. This should take about an hour. So this yeah. is very easily done in a, in a, in a remote session. So. Just put up your conference tool, get together in the room, share, share, share the screen and start filling it in uh, yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. And what I know from working together with you uh, is, um, is that you take a very user centered approach, right? That's the main, the main part on this, uh, this piece yeah. and also to get alignment uh, for the stakeholders on. Yeah, 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 definitely. So this is a 100% user centered approach, which I think also fits really well uh, with the scrum methodology that we used to uh, uh, do with Mendix, uh, it's it's definitely focused on the users, what they need to do, and how how they're going to get there. Uh, that is the core of these templates. It's probably also why I, I as a designer, am so into this uh, stuff, right? <laughs> so, as I said, so this is just about an hour. It fits nicely into a conference call. Um, if it's, by the way, if it's not done in the hour, you should really reconsider if you are ready to start your project or if you need a bit more preparation time. So that is basically, uh, this first template. Um, but then comes the heavy lifting, right? Which is, uh, the largest templates. I think the end goal of this template is to, uh, fill your backlog with user stories to know a little bit more about the types of functionalities and journeys that your users are going to take and how you design them in your product. Yeah. And because uh, starting a project can be quite daunting. I mean, there's so many options definitely in software, which you can build, which you can do. Uh, is there a certain kind of uh, approach to that? How do you try to keep it small? Yeah, you focus a lot. So this methodology works really good also with MVPs, so minimum yeah. viable products. Uh, you're not supposed to uh, fill in every user journey you can think of, right? You're supposed to pick the most important ones, focus on them ruthlessly, and then make them as, as good as possible, I think. So uh, you can see one, two, three from left to left, right. So we really start with the personas, with the users. You do some interviews in separate groups. So the first session was with the whole group, right? This was with the conference uh, call. Uh, now I split up uh, the group. Um, a few will start working on interviews and making the personas, other ones more on the technical challenges uh, the lay ahead. And then what you try to do is you plan in a few meetings in which you come back together as a larger group and then you uh, 
uh, go over the results uh, that you got. Yeah, I think and I think that's something. Uh, I mean, that can be a bit challenging because uh, people have kids at home. Uh, some people have dogs at home or cats. You know, they can walk through the street. Game. People get um, distracted. Do you have some tips there on how yeah. to do that? Yeah, 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 definitely. So one thing that's good to do is, aside from these more official meetings that you have together. You really open up a communication channel that is ongoing and that and that could also just be WhatsApp that everyone has. So keep on talking with each other, keep on updating each other, ask each other questions, keep the conversation going. And then it's good to maybe maybe at the beginning of your preparation, try to pinpoint some of these key moments, especially when people have kids or anything so that everybody can plan it for them. Also, biggest tip. I think don't spend the entire day in conference calls. So really just just plan a few and make them highly effective. Uh, conference calls are very tiring. Uh, and in the end, uh, the end result is is really going to lower in quality if you have uh, too many of them. Yeah. So and another tip, another tip that I like to what I would like to share is actually what I got from out of the community. And it's something I, I really like is that um, if you're working with a globally dispersed team, so if some people are in different time zones and you are splitting up the group, make sure to record the sessions so people can watch them back, like maybe during breakfast or lunch, they can get up to speed with the team and everyone is aligned on the, uh, the vision for the project. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good tip. The other tools I've seen surface a lot are tools like, uh, Dropbox paper in, in which it's not an official document, but it's more about uh, where people draw up their ideas. I've seen Trello being used as a post-it uh, uh, into uh, option. And, and, and I think there, there are so many tools out there that could help you, right? Yeah, exactly. Like for example, even Zoom, right? You can just put a whiteboard on there. Uh, you can start drawing, save the image. And what we always do is we put the uh, the documents in the sprinter section under documents, so you have a reference point. So if you have your sprinter project, make make sure to invite all the stakeholders and also maybe some end users even. Uh, and in the, under the document section, people can uh, get back. And also, uh, this will help you during your build sprints, um, because often when you start building, people want more. But it's really good to get back to those most important epics, back to your MVP to get something live. When if you get something live, you can start to iterate and you'll learn way more from actual usage of the application than just by talking about it. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I think actually it's quite logical because where the template ends is the epics level, which is the more of the, the bigger chunks of, of functionality that, that you want to incorporate in your solution. But of course, this is a preparation technique, so you do need to create user stories. So combining the two in the same platform. So if you use Sprinter, just write the user stories there, download and upload your documents. That really makes a lot of sense. So indeed, the put stories in uh, Sprinter and uh, then you are ready to go, right? Then you can start building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, for the people that want to play out a little bit more, so there are some more templates in here. So for instance, template about putting together personas based on your interviews. Uh, we also just have some sketching templates in there for people to just play with. Um, I think in the end, the only tip I want to give, uh, which is a little bit harder since everyone's at home, uh, this typically this, this would be your wall in your war room. Of course, digitally, it's a little bit more hard. If you don't have someone on your team that can sort of copy paste into PowerPoint or do something with graphic tools, then by all means, just make a Word document out of it and just go from top to bottom and just let the layout of the template go. In the end, it's about the content. Yeah, exactly. Just get your hands dirty and start making. Yeah. Cool. Well, Willem, uh, please stay inside, stay safe. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, for your time, uh, and we will make sure that we share these templates with you so you can uh, start making yourself. Uh, be safe, everybody. Thank be you. Safe. Bye.